I V M. News Kids on the Block. We bring to you stories that top the nation's papers. Fresh from the Ascend International School and in IVM desk. Hi. I'm Kavya. I'm Anya. And I'm Trivik. And welcome to the fourth episode of News Kids on the Block, where we give you all the top news updates of the week. And for today's COVID update, I will be taking over rather than Kavya, who usually does it. And we'll start right off with the first point, which is that while a lot of countries are relaxing their COVID protocols, there are also countries where COVID cases are resurging and still very high. And this is being fueled by the, not necessarily new, but by the Delta variant. And what's so dangerous about this Delta variant is that it spreads really, really fast. The pro- biggest problem is with the Delta variant. And the next part of the COVID update is that the CNN reported that the World Health Organization said that by the end of the Olympics, at least 100,000 more people will die. How dark. Please stay safe, everyone. Wear a mask. Well, moving on to the next story that we have lined up for you, I wanted to talk about journalists in Afghanistan. And this is, of course, in light of uh, Danish Sadiqi, the photojournalist who was recently shot dead while covering a clash between Afghan special forces and Taliban insurgents in Kandahar. Uh, he was shot dead on 15th July 2021. Uh, and he had won numerous awards, including a Pulitzer Prize in 2018 for his work on documenting the Rohingya refugee crisis. If you read Reuters, I'm sure you must have seen some of his photos and they're all very powerful um and actually courtesy of a teacher at school i was able to interview him a very very long time ago um for our school paper and i was completely awestruck and nervous so the interview itself was quite terrible but was extremely inspiring and he was very sweet and it's strange to like think about this kind of after that experience uh, you can actually find the article in our school newspaper which you can uh, access at the ascent.news that is spelled T H E A S C E N T dot N E W S. Bravo, Trivik. Well spelt as always. Um, but Anya, I think that you were talking about how other journalists as well were affected by um, the current sort of tumultuous situation in Afghanistan. Yeah, I was reading about this before we started also. And according to Reporters Without Borders, at least 85 local Afghan journalists have been killed in connection with their work in the past 20 years. Um, After the Taliban came into power, most media was discontinued. So television sets were literally destroyed and many newspapers were banned. And in place of them, very specific certain religious radio shows and newspapers were allowed. But now, as the US troops are heading out, um, the Taliban seems to be seizing control in the region again. And so journalists can, are sort of at an added risk in an already risky profession in a risky area. Yeah, that's super scary, especially because a couple of months ago, the US taking troops out of Afghanistan was such a big deal and it was this like huge thing. And now it's really scary to think about how the Taliban is gaining a lot of control again. I agree with you completely, Kavya. And one of the articles that I had read as inspiration for this particular news story was a great feature in Al Jazeera by Robin Huang and Matt Reichel and it just talks about the importance of journalism um, to Afghan citizens as well as the effects of being a journalist in Afghanistan and follows the lives of different people and the education for it but at the same time very adverse effects and detrimental things that they can experience like targeted shootings, kidnappings etc. And I think the whole thing just puts into perspective like these are the people who are giving you the news they're like cooler versions of us they're giving you the news um they're doing all of this stuff and at the same time they're in the news because of all the stuff that they have to endure yeah, that's scary but it's super interesting at the same time on that very heavy and deep note we shall take a quick break but don't go anywhere we'll be right back hi i'm zarina punawala host of the empowering series podcast on the ivm network I happen to be a peak performance coach and leadership coach by profession. And I'm here to share with you productivity tools, life-altering techniques, and real life hacks to help you achieve your maximum potential in everything you do, your relationships, professions, careers. So tune in every Monday to unleash your inner power. Be safe, be well, be empowered. Welcome back to News Kids on the Block. My name is Trivik and our next story is about Jeff Bezos. He is the founder of Amazon. Also the richest man in the world. Exactly, Kavya. And an article by NDTV claimed that Jeff Bezos, the founder of Amazon.com, has recently picked up, I guess you could call it a hobby. Himself and three others landed after Blue Origin's first flight to space with passengers aboard. 
I think this was a big step forward to everyone being able to put their footprint on the moon. I think that was a big, great part. Get it? Because step forward and footprints. I thought of a much better one. He is delivering hope to the people on Earth who someday want to go to the. Well, um, the new. I think yours was your both were pretty eh in comparison to the New York Magazine, who had an article titled "Earth Briefly Gets Rid of Its Richest Man." Thought it was rather iconic, um, and the memes also after this flight were all over the place. And this is about as updated I am with pop culture. So, Trivik, why don't you remind us what exactly a flight to space constitutes of? I think the best way to explain what a flight to space is it would be to tell you what exactly Jeff Bezos did on his journey to space. So, the flight landed in Western Texas at around eight twenty-two a.m. local time. And this was around ten minutes after it first took off, and the people on board experienced weightlessness for a couple of minutes as it soared past the Kármán line at a height of around a hundred kilometers above the Earth. And the capsule was then eased back into the orbit with the help of six parachutes. And I think it's really crazy. Now in twenty twenty one, you can go to space and back in just what eleven minutes, ten minutes, and that's just insane to me when you look at it. Uh, Kavya, I wanted to ask you. Do you see yourself going on a flight to space at some point during your lifetime? What a very relevant question, Trivik. But if I'm being completely honest, no, I do not see myself going into space anytime soon. Um, first of all, that's not even within my budget, and second of all, I'm sure Trivik is dying to point out that I would probably not make the cut because of my height. Moving on, I I guess right now you could definitely say that the budget is way past what we could dream of, at least now. Way past is a bit of an understatement, Trivik. Yes, yeah, true, but I guess even a hundred years ago, I guess flights were also very expensive, and they won't. You know, most people couldn't afford to go on planes and to travel across. You know, travel to countries via flights via the air, but now people are taking flights like there's no tomorrow. So maybe at some point in the future, maybe not in our lifetime, but these flights will be very affordable, and people will be able to go to the. Will be able to go to space and back. I think the question here also is sort of like, would they need COVID tests to go up into space? Hopefully not, because in a hundred years, I am hoping that COVID is finished. But you never know at this rate. Yeah, I also think that this brings up a very important point that we need to get Kavya really rich so she can go to space. Yes, guys, you do. I'll start like an online fund, send Kavya to space. Maybe you can keep her. And this is also, in fact, last week we reported. Uh, another billionaire going to space. So it's been two billionaires going to space within the span of a week, which is super cool. And Kavya still isn't one of them. Yeah, I'm not one of them, but hopefully I will be soon. <laughs> but let's move on to the world of sports, where we are recording this on Wednesday night. This morning was the final, final, as I like to call it, um, because it was six games of the NBA, where the Phoenix Suns faced off the Milwaukee Bucks, and the first two games was great for the Phoenix Suns. They won both of them back to back. But that was the end of their NBA Finals glory, um, as the Bucks won the next four games and they went on to win the championship after a shocking fifty years. And their star and two-time MVP winner Giannis Antetokounmpo, which is way harder to pronounce than you think, he scored fifty points and he led his team, the Milwaukee Bucks, to victory. And he also grabbed the award for the Finals MVP. And the final score was one hundred and five Milwaukee Bucks to ninety eight Phoenix Suns. And my sister, who has also provided us with the facts of this story, because we are all three very unaware about the NBA, so credit to her. But she has also provide kindly provided us with two fun facts about the finals. The first one is that all now all three Atenakumpo brothers have won a championship, and two of them have won with the Bucks this season, and one has won with the Lakers last season. And my sister has told me to say that their mom must be very proud because one of them moves to represent Greece in the Olympics this year. The second fun fact is that the star of the opposition team, Devin Booker, who was played brilliant, brilliantly throughout the entire season, he wasn't really able to get going. He wasn't able to pick up any momentum in this game, and it was he scored a very disappointing nineteen points. But um, it's fine because everyone has their bad days. So, do you have anything to add? I also, like you said, I, I'm not a very, very big fan of the NBA. But I did catch the game today, and I think something which I was talking to my dad about this: the way teams would keep out Giannis was that they would foul him and they'd send him to the free throw line. And Giannis couldn't shoot free throws for his, to save his life. You know, he was never, ever, never really good at free throws. But today, I think he went 15 from 16 on on the free throw line, and I think that was a big part in how they won. He was taking his free throws, he was making his 
chances. And I think he's really reinvented himself as a player this season. Not only is he able to now take the ball to the rim, he's able to shoot from anywhere. He's not exactly able to shoot his free throws consistently yet, but he's getting there, surely. And he's also got a new playmaking aspect to his game, which I think is really cool. Thanks, Tarek. We'll take a quick break and we'll be right back. Hey, everybody, let me tell you a little bit about what happened on the IVM Podcast Network this week. On Cider Says, Cyrus was joined by Irfan Pabani, who is an old friend of his. They talk about the rich flavors of Indian food and Parsi food specifically. He was also joined by author and historian William Dalrymple. They discuss literature, history, and the culture of the Indian subcontinent. And let me give you a few quick things to check out. Chuck, a.k.a. Deepak Gopal Krishnan of Simplified and the Origin of Things frame, has Rohan Joshi, formerly of AIB, on his show. Also on this round is on me, Gautam Puroit of Thakur's Bojnale was on. On the note, Maruk and I talks about the cabinet reshuffle. And do check out Global Victoria Tech Talks. We talk about the booming gaming and edgy tech industries in Australia. Do follow us on Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, and Instagram to keep up what's going on on the network. And I'd like to finally thank our sponsors on the network this week, Cred, Siet, and Global Victoria. Thank you so much for making this possible. Well, coming back to national news, students of Class 10 CBSC have gone onto social media requesting the Board and Union Education Minister Dharmendra Pradhan to announce the CBSC Class 10 result 2021 date. Um, the results itself w- themselves were supposed to be announced, I think, on like the 20th of June, but they will now be announced on another day, it seems. I think the whole process has just been very infuriating for students all around and we saw that when there was all of that controversy going on about whether there should or should not be exams. But, you know, this kind of waiting and unsure and uncertainty that students have to deal with, especially at such an important point in their lives as students, um, I think it's a lot of, it's added pressure on them. Um, And I guess the sort of slowness of responsiveness from the government was unappreciated and found very annoyed it really annoyed of course it really infuriated the students and you know you go on like certain ministers accounts and stuff and you'll see them like they're wishing someone happy whatever festival and at the bottom people will just be like sir please cbsc results and i think that just shows the desperation for students um in knowing what their future holds in store for them i completely agree considering that this is such an important part of a student's life and obviously i can't relate to it because um i haven't had to face that yet and in ib you don't have board exams in the 10th grade necessarily but i can i can't even imagine the stress and the kind of uncertainty and the annoyance that students must be facing when this is such a big part of their lives and they don't really have any assurance um, in any of this. Yeah, so I think our heart goes out to all of our fellow students. Yes, definitely. Um, so let's move on. So one of my favorite singers, Olivia Rodrigo, um, for those of you who don't know, that's her album name. But she recently went to the White House where she met many people of importance, including Dr. Anthony Fauci and the president of the United States, uh, Joe Biden. And um, she gave like a little mini speech about how how the importance of young people in the country getting the COVID-19 vaccine and the effect it will have. And on that note, UK as well, they decided not to vaccinate most children and teenagers unless they have a condition against the COVID-19 because of obviously it's health reasons but Anya and Trivik, how do you guys think that children feel about this in the UK? Well I can't speak for the UK but I think that um, with a population as large as India um, and just how much of the virus there is there's definitely a sense of uncertainty like always and in some ways the vaccine is sort of like a safeguard or like a shield of some kind even though it's not fully effective like we've talked about um, so I think for students or for children in general, it's just a bit of like a thing where they know what's going on, but they can't really do anything about it. And so they're just stuck in the middle. Um, and I think that I don't really know how people feel about this, honestly, because like it's a strange thing that no one knows what the vaccine is going to do, what it's going to do on kids. And because it hasn't even been approved in India and India has so many people, I think that India needs to like vaccinate everyone. And then apparently, so it seems that for most countries and everything, students or kids seem to be like the lowest on the totem pole in terms of priority yeah and i can understand why but at the same time speaking from the perspective of a teenager you know as even though like obviously you can still get covid like we've spoken after getting your doses of coronavirus vaccine i think that just the freedom and the sense of release relief that you get with getting the vaccine is something that um, we are still yet to experience but hopefully we do experience that soon anyways that's all we have for you today 
from the Ascent International School and IVM desk. We hope you enjoyed this episode of News Kids on the Block. Don't forget to tune into us every Friday for our fresh take on the news from across the globe. If you like this podcast, don't forget to check out other interesting podcasts on the IVM network. You can listen to us on the IVM podcast app or ivmpodcast.com. You can also follow us on our social media. We are at IVM Podcast on Twitter and Instagram. We'll see you next week, but till then do share this episode with your folks. Stay safe and don't forget to do your homework. We live in an age of disruption, of immense change in every aspect of work, life and business. But is the old way of doing things truly dead? And are we ever going to stop saying the new normal? Join me, Varun Dugirala, on Advertising is Dead every Tuesday as I talk to entrepreneurs, leaders, creators and change makers from across business, media, marketing and beyond to dig a little deeper into how we got here, what we're doing now and where we're headed. You can catch all the episodes of Advertising is Dead on the IBM Podcast website, app or wherever you get your podcast from. If you love cricket, listen up. The Edges and Sledges Cricket Podcast is here for you. Hosted by DJ, Varun, and me, Ashwin, we bring a fun, fresh fan's point of view to talking all things cricket. Sometimes it's just the three of us, sometimes we have guests, including current and former international cricketers. For new episodes every week, check out the Edges and Sledges Cricket Podcast on the IBM app, website, or wherever you get your podcasts.